Okay, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about carbohydrates, another extremely important nutrient in our food. Over the course of the next few videos, we're going to discuss a whole bunch of questions. Questions like, which foods have carbohydrates? And what happens to carbohydrate-rich foods when we consume them? We're also going to ask the question, are some carbohydrates better than others? And if so, which ones? In order to answer these questions, we're going to pose a whole bunch of other questions like how much sugar is in a can of soda, how much sugar is in fruit juices. We're going to discuss ideas for healthy drinks. And finally, we're going to end with a debate, a debate on whole versus refined grains. Now, my recommendation with these questions one more time is that after I have posed a question, you pause the video, think about the answer and then move on. So before I ask you the first question, let me just clear out a misconception. There are a lot of diets out there that make blanket pronouncements about how eating carbohydrates is bad for you. That is just untrue. Carbohydrates are an extremely important part of our diet. And during the course of this video, we're going to learn why that is the case. Okay, we're now ready to ask our first question, which is, which foods are rich in carbohydrates? Well, there's a rather long list. Cereals, bread, beans, these are excellent sources of carbohydrates and so are fruits and vegetables. Carbohydrates are also present in sugar, potatoes, pasta, cookies and soft drinks. Now looking at this rather long list, the next obvious question to ask is, are there some kinds of carbohydrates that are better than others? Well, what I can tell you right now is that whole grains are definitely better than refined grains. We're going to prove this very soon. But remember, whole grains are better than refined grains. Beans, fruits and vegetables are also excellent sources of carbohydrates. Soft drinks and sweetened beverages, however, not so much. I want to take a moment now to highlight the various varieties of cereals. But before I do that, what does the word cereal mean? Well, the word cereal comes from Ceres, which is the Roman goddess of grain and agriculture. Makes sense, doesn't it? Well, there are several varieties of cereals like wheat, rice, oats and corn and there are several others. Now that we know about some of the foods that contain carbohydrates, let's move on to the next question which is why do we need carbohydrates in our diet? Well, we need them for energy. Carbohydrates provide the fuel that is necessary for our body to do physical activity. Per gram, carbohydrates provide about 4 calories of energy. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. We now know a list of food products that are rich in carbohydrates. We also know that carbohydrates are needed for energy. Which brings us to our third question, which is, what are the different forms or types of carbohydrates? Well, to answer this question, what we can do is look at the different headings underneath the carbohydrate section of the package label, can't we? Well, it turns out there are three different forms or types of carbohydrates. Sugar, starch and dietary fiber. We're going to talk about sugars in this particular video. The way we're going to learn about sugars is by answering the question, what happens to carbohydrate rich foods when we consume them? Watch the following video which details a list of scripted events that food goes through after we've consumed it. Your body takes the food you eat and breaks down fat, protein and carbohydrates for energy. While your body is digesting the food, the carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. The glucose is then absorbed into the bloodstream where it is carried to cells throughout your body. So we just saw how carbohydrate rich foods are converted into glucose inside our body. What is glucose? Glucose is a simple sugar, a form of a carbohydrate, which is also an extremely important energy source for our body. By the way, glucose is also known as blood sugar. So how is it that glucose, a simple sugar, provides energy to our body? In order to answer this question, what I'm going to do is play the same video again. But this time round, I'm going to let it play a little bit longer so we get the full context. Let's watch. Your body takes the food you eat and breaks down fat, protein and carbohydrates for energy. While your body is digesting the food, the carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. The glucose is then absorbed into the bloodstream where it is carried to cells throughout your body. Insulin helps your cells absorb the glucose in your blood, allowing it to be used as energy. 
a healthy pancreas releases a regular supply of insulin into your bloodstream. After you eat, your blood glucose levels rise and your pancreas responds by releasing more insulin to move the glucose into your cells. Insulin acts as a key, opening up the cell so it can accept the glucose. Okay, let's discuss what we just saw in the video. The narrator of the video mentioned a couple of new words, pancreas and insulin. Let's talk about each one of them. Pancreas is a gland just behind the stomach which is responsible for releasing insulin. Let me actually show you where pancreas resides in a 3D model of the human body. Okay, so we're looking at the model of a human body and what I'm going to do is peel off a few layers from this model like the muscular layer so we can look at some of the glands that we want to see. I'm going to click on the stomach. That's the stomach right there and right behind the stomach is the pancreas. Now let me just rotate the body so you can have a real good look at where pancreas resides inside our body. Okay, so now we know the location of pancreas inside our body and we also know that pancreas releases insulin. What is insulin? Well, insulin is a hormone which regulates the amount of glucose in our body. And how does it do that? It does that by acting like a key. In insulin's presence, cells can absorb glucose from the bloodstream into the cell for energy or for storage. Okay, so now that we know what pancreas and insulin are, we can go back to our original video to answer the question, how do we get energy from sugars or carbohydrates? So when our body eats carbohydrate-rich foods, the digestible portion of the carbohydrate-rich foods gets converted to glucose. Glucose, let's remember, is a simple sugar that is transported in our body using the bloodstream. Our cells absorb glucose with the help of insulin. Insulin is a hormone that is secreted by pancreas and pancreas is a gland that is right behind the stomach inside our bodies. So every time that we eat, whether it be for breakfast, lunch or dinner, the blood sugar level in our body rises and that is represented with the help of a red curve in this particular diagram. Whenever our blood sugar level rises, the pancreas responds by releasing insulin and that is represented by the yellow curve in this diagram. So how do our cells absorb glucose? Well, in the presence of insulin, the cells absorb glucose from the bloodstream inside the cells uh, for energy or for future storage. That is how we get energy from carbohydrate-rich foods. It is quite evident that pancreas and insulin are extremely important as far as glucose absorption in our body is concerned. And glucose absorption is important because that's how we get energy. So, I want you to consider a scenario where the pancreas stops making enough insulin. Well, that is part one of a research project that I want you to think about. What do you think will happen if the pancreas stops making enough insulin? And how will that particular situation or ailment be controlled by a physician? The second scenario that I want you to think of as part of this particular research project is what if the body or the pancreas continues to produce enough insulin but the body no longer responds to the insulin being produced what will happen in that case and how will that particular situation be controlled I hope you've had some chance to work on this research project you can of course compare your answers with mine the first situation in which the pancreas stops making enough insulin is called type 1 diabetes and the way it's controlled is through injections of insulin for life. The second situation in which the pancreas produces insulin but the body no longer responds to the insulin being produced, that is known as type 2 diabetes. And the way that is controlled is through exercise and a proper diet. In the next video, we're going to talk about how excessive sugar consumption leads to type 2 diabetes. Okay, so let's do a very quick recap of what we have learned in the video today. We started out by asking the question, which foods are rich in carbohydrates? And we identified several foods that fit that category. We also asked if there were certain types of carbohydrates that were better than others. Whole grains, beans, fruits and vegetables we realized are the best sources of carbohydrates and that they promote healthy living. Then we moved on to asking the following question, which is, 
why do we need carbohydrates and the answer to that we discovered was for energy per gram carbohydrates provide about four calories of energy finally we discussed the process carbohydrates go through after we have consumed them we now know that the digestible portion of carbohydrates get converted into glucose which is a simple sugar glucose then travels throughout our body with the help of the bloodstream and cells absorb glucose in the presence of insulin in the next video we're going to talk about sugar rich drinks that we consume sugar rich drinks like sodas and fruit juices we're also going to discuss ideas on making tasty and healthy drinks see you then